The intention of today's Mass is for Rita Gianna Tiempo. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. That's one of the alternate greetings at Mass. It's in the Missal. I didn't make it up. My friends, as we gather together today for the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice, we continue our journey with our Lord toward Jerusalem to his sacrificial death and life-giving resurrection and the teaching of his parables on discipleship. For the times that we have not been faithful to those teachings and have not lived lives of faithful discipleship to Christ, let us now ask the Lord's forgiveness. Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Great. 
Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we open our ears and our hearts to the Holy Word of God proclaimed in the readings from the Bible. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold, our God to whom we looked to save us, this is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know how to live with abundance. In every circumstance, in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet, my calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, my friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. And so the war continues. I don't mean only the one in the Ukraine. I don't mean only the one in Gaza. 
I don't even only mean the Korean War, which actually never ended. It's been a ceasefire since 1953, believe it or not. But I'm speaking not of those kind of headline wars that dominate the news nowadays, but actually, well, take your pick. According to Wikipedia, there are at this moment 58 wars or civil wars or insurrections going on right now that most of us never ever hear about. Many of them involving tribes or ethnic minorities completely unfamiliar to me at least, like Kivu and Meghalaya, Oromo and Kabinda, as well as a few others that are more familiar. In other words, the world is a mess. And not just right now, it's pretty much most of human history, it's been that way. It's often been a mess. In fact, Wikipedia again, may as well try to be objective here, catalogs 117 wars in human history that can be assigned definite dates of beginning and ending, 117, which is remarkable, and numerous other insurgencies, clashes, and conflicts that remain lost in the, midst of, in the mists of history and prehistory. It's not a good record for humanity. And sadly, not a good record for the followers of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Many of us Christians have failed him in that regard. Now, that may not seem to have much to do with today's readings or to do much with Christ's final journey toward his death in Jerusalem, as we've spoken about, during which he instructs his church about true disciples, true discipleship in a series of parables that we've been hearing week after week for these last two months. Today's parable of the royal wedding feast is actually a warning about the consequences of two great dangers for us as disciples. First, the danger of rejecting Christ's call to baptism and to ongoing conversion. And secondly, the danger of not following up on our baptism and our conversion by acts of good deeds, of love, and devotion to Christ himself. The prevalence, and it is fairly prevalent, I think you'll agree with me, of violence and war in human history, even among Christians, tells us that it is possible to become like those people in today's parable who either reject God's invitation entirely or who, having accepted the invitation, don't actually wear that wedding garment of good deeds, of charity in what we do and think, and of faithfulness and devotion to the Eucharistic banquet that is the foreshadowing of that heavenly banquet that the parable is really speaking about, that the first reading in the Old Testament is also directing our attention to. Now, most of us, don't directly experience the ravages of military warfare right here in the United States. We thank those of you who have served our country. We thank you for your service, if you have. But it doesn't get to our shores with the regularity of a war on our soil. But the seeds of war are planted and nourished in any and all violations of God's law, violence and aggression manifest themselves in our lives long before the armies begin to march. It is our daily commonplace quotidian garden variety sins and failures in true Christian discipleship we fail to have that wedding garment.
It is our failure to accept the invitation to ongoing conversion and our failure to wear that wedding garment of obedience to God's law that enables and sows the seeds of violence of any kind, whether it be domestic or psychological or social or that of warfare itself. It is ordinary sin and lack of devotion to Christ that begin to unravel the fabric of peace. I know this from my own interior life. I know this from counseling families that are in turmoil. I know this from talking to different people. I recently had a conversation with a very well-educated Catholic parent who told me that they, they don't require their minor children to attend church or religion classes if they don't want to go because it's okay, quote, because they've already been baptized so we know they won't go to hell, unquote. Unfortunately, even though they might believe that, that's not what our Lord says in this parable today where the unprepared wedding guest is cast into the darkness outside the heavenly banquet. It is true for every one of us when we ignore that call to ongoing conversion. The same failure to take seriously the obligations of whatever our vocation in life may be and of our faith can happen to any of us, whether we are single or married, priest, pope or nun, king, general or government leader, so what can we do? What is the remedy? I would suggest we can take our lead from St. Paul in today's second reading, who teaches us that the secret of contentment in life is to remain in communion with Christ in whom I can do all things, him who strengthens me with the glorious riches that only he can give us, as St. Paul says. True peace, not as this world gives it to us, but true peace, not as this violent, war-torn, God-forgetting world gives it, a peace of desolation and war-ravaged devastation and of spiritual despair but rather where today's scriptures teach. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every face. And in that place where he will spread a table before us in the sight of our foes, as is foreshadowed in this and every Eucharistic banquet in which we are called and invited to participate. Let us wear our wedding garments of true discipleship and let us be faithful to that call. God bless you. on page 27 of the St. Michael's hymn book and in the Missalette with the readings. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. St. Paul assures us that God will fully supply whatever we need, so we have the confidence to name our needs and the needs of all our sisters and brothers. For the church, that we may be relentless in extending God's invitation to every person we encounter, gathering people from every corner of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected leaders, that they may work to see that those at the margins of society are treated with dignity and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. For those here and at home, for those here at home and around the world who are malnourished and go hungry, who never get to experience a banquet of rich food and choice wines, let us pray to the Lord. For all parents who are saddened by the loss of a child, may God give them courage and help them in their pain and grief. May they all meet one day in the joy and peace of your kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may go forth from this Eucharistic banquet, nourished and inspired to share the richness of our feast with those searching for a source of hope and love. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in our hearts, peace in our communities, peace in all the troubled areas of the world, especially in the Ukraine and the Middle East, let us pray to the Lord. And for the intention of today's Mass, for Rita Gianni Tiempo, we pray to the Lord. God of plenty, you invite us to your feast. Inspire us to extend that hospitality and generosity to all those we encounter as we rely on you to provide through your Son and our Savior, now and forever, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we conclude the Liturgy of the Word and enter into the Liturgy of the Eucharist, bringing forth our gifts of bread and wine and the offerings that reflect the return that we make unto the Lord. We thank you for your generosity.
that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, the living. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks. 
He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants, and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen Matthias Barnabas, Ignatius Alexander, Marcellinus Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, St. Teresa of Avila, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. of God. Behold, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so may you make us sharers in his divine nature. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We do have a few announcements to share with you. On Sunday, October 15th, well, that's today, isn't it? Today, the Co Cathedral of St. Joseph will be hosting the Polish Heritage Mass for the Diocese of Brooklyn at 3.30, followed by a concert. There's information about that in the bulletin I've seen at 6 p.m. So 3.30 Mass, 6 p.m. concert. Those who would like to come are most welcome. The annual celebration of World Mission Sunday will take place on the weekend of October 21st and 22nd. This global Eucharistic celebration for the church's missions is an opportunity to remind our parishioners of their own call to be missionary disciples. We assist the Holy Father exercise his Petrine obligation to support the church in the missions by praying for our missionaries and financially supporting their ministry. We thank you for, their genero for your generosity. A month's mind memorial mass for Father Robert Vitaglioni, will, who was a pastor of this parish for many years, up to about 2011, the year 2011, will be celebrated, and he died, he died last week, God rest him. He, it will be celebrated here, this month's mind mass, here at St. Joseph's at 7 p.m. on Friday, November 3rd. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace, amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And have a blessed week, everybody. The Lord be with you. Bow down and pray for God's blessing. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.